Hey, welcome back to the book of Exodus. We're at Exodus 12, today verses 42 to 47. It is a night to be observed for the Lord for having brought them out from the land of Egypt. This night is for the Lord to be observed by all the sons of Israel throughout their generations. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron, this is the ordinance of the Passover. No foreigner is to eat of it. But every man's slave purchased with money after you have circumcised him, then he may eat of it. A sojourner or a hired servant shall not eat of it. It is to be eaten in a single house. You are not to bring forth any of the flesh outside of the house, nor are you to break any bone of it. All the congregation of Israel are to celebrate this. So no foreigners are to eat the Passover. Now this wasn't an arbitrary hatred of outsiders, but it was a recognition that those who intentionally join themselves to the covenant community, they observe the, the pieces that are there. And I know today we're living in a time when, you know, people don't want to be distinctive. They don't want to do something that sets them apart from anyone else. There's kind of an allergy to anything that might be exclusive. And so people are trying to make sure that, you know, that we, we don't stand out in any way. But I want you to notice that, that here that uh, it's very clear that there is distinct points that God calls for his people to be uphold, to uphold, to be true to. And so God's church must be the same. God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And it, it is still true that there are distinct things for us to do as we serve the Lord of heaven and earth. Today, there are churches and groups that are fragmenting. They, 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 the culture is inwashing upon them. They're incorporating cultural standards of, of sexuality. And they're just, instead of following what God has revealed, they're just, they're just letting this stuff come in every which place. Strong narratives and externally generated agendas, you know, drive the churches. I remember I went to a, a church in at Idaho one time, and there along the wall in this, this was a friend's church, there was every kind of thing that was the current, the current push by the government. There were stuff there. All the literature there was pro-abortion, against carbon and coal, global warming, and so on. It was all there. Every, every, every agenda you see today uh, was, was there. It was kind of like they were like an outlet for the, the media narrative was in their little church. And God helped them. Because the people of God need to be going to the Word of God, and then from the Word of God, we spread God's story. We spread the story as God gives it. We're not uh, out here looking, you know, just just like like frogs looking out their tongues to find any 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 media narrative fly that comes along, and they're just going to swallow it up because yum yum. Uh, no, the church needs to be delivering God's truth, not receiving the nonsense that comes in from outside of God's truth. I want you to notice that here in the book of Exodus, those who are not part of God's community are self-excluded. They're outside in God's people, God's covenant community enforces the boundaries. The churches today must enforce the boundaries. We have to uphold biblical teaching. We have to uphold a biblical standard of lifestyle. Nobody's going to walk in off the street and do it for you. Friend, it's up to you. It's up to me. It's up to every believer to be true and faithful to Yahweh. And in Exodus, outsiders are unambiguously excluded. Not a problem. In fact, without that, you don't have anything. So may the church rise up and be faithful. Now notice another thing here. This isn't about classes. Because this, even the servant, even the, the servant is in at the same time as the princes of Israel. They, if they're circumcised, they all participate. They all get the Passover meal. They all eat it. There's the same law for God's people and even for the foreigner uh, everything works out as long as they follow the, the description there, you're in. Circumcision marks the dividing line of the community here. Now here's another thing that's interesting. Did you notice where it said that it all ever has to be eaten inside in one house? The people who are participating in the Passover, they come in and they all eat in one house. Just as they did that night, you know, as they came in, Sacrifice was made. It was just before, it was before midnight, some period of time, but it was after the sundown. And there they were. They were in one house together as they went through the Passover. And so that's how you observe the Passover. You have to be together under one roof. Everybody had to remain inside while the death angel passed over. And so every time that they would continue to observe the Passover year by year by year, they would always do it inside in an evening, just like it was in done in Egypt. Eating inside also helped prevent outsider participation. Finally, did you notice that all the congregation are to partake together? 
This wasn't an optional meal. It wasn't like, well, you can do it if you want. Everybody had to do it. This is, this is just commanded. All were given opportunity to partake of the sacrifice, to act on God's instructions, and the firstborn were preserved. All right, we'll carry on tomorrow morning. Oh, by the way, don't forget, on Mondays at noon, America, Detroit time, uh, we do a little YouTube live. And so you're welcome to come and, and join us for that if you want to. We'll just talk for 20 or 30 minutes about any of the stuff we've released over the week and the devotionals, answer any questions you have. God bless you.